Um, our speakers today, we joined Holly from the University of Gloucester is going to open things up with a, an introduction to biology and biosciences courses. And then we're going to pass to Tegan from Edge Hill University. And Tegan's going to offer a student perspective because um, Tegan actually, as well as Holly, um, has actually graduated from the biology course. So Tegan's going to kind of look at things from a student perspective. She's also going to talk about some of the disciplines of biology, give you a few application tips as well. And then last but certainly not no means least, Chris Field is here from Manchester Metropolitan University. Chris is a senior lecturer over there and he's going to provide a, an academic perspective on the course and, and what to expect on a biology programme. But without further ado, let's get going with today's event. If I can introduce our first speaker, that's Holly. Holly is a student recruitment and outreach officer at the University of Gloucestershire. And Holly, I'll pass the floor to you, please. As John said, my name is Holly Thompson. I'm a student recruitment and outreach officer at the University of Gloucestershire. And I'm going to be giving you an introduction to studying biology and biosciences at university. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the courses that come under those kind of terms. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about the types of elements that might affect your decision about where to study one of these courses. I'm also going to touch on um, some of the careers um, that students that graduate on these courses um, might go on to do. I'm also going to signpost you to some really useful web pages and resources that you can um, go to as well that might help you find out a bit more about what I've talked about this morning. So just to tell you a little bit about me and about where I work. Uh, so I work at the University of Gloucestershire. Uh, we're found right in the heart of the Cotswolds, uh, split across campuses in Cheltenham and in Gloucester. And we're really close by to big cities such as Bristol and Birmingham. And just to tell you a bit about me, so before I worked at the University of Gloucestershire, I studied a biology degree and I did this for four years and honestly had the most amazing time. Um, I absolutely adored my time studying at university. Um, and for me, biology has always been, <clears throat> excuse me, has always been a subject that's really interested me. So um, both within school, but also outside of school, uh, through just loving being outdoors, um, loving nature and being really intrigued um, by the world around me. Since I left university, I've been working in a couple of different areas. Uh, so I was a teaching assistant for a while at a secondary school. I then moved um, to uh, work at, for the Wildlife Trust. I was a wildlife conservation trainee. And I also have been working in environmental education as well. So running some outdoor education programs. And obviously now I work at the University of Gloucestershire. So let's start off with what is biology and what are biosciences? So biology being the study of living organisms, a very broad subject which covers lots of different areas, um, which I'll sort of touch upon as we go through. Biosciences is kind of the umbrella term we're using for other courses that come under that, uh, that kind of biology area. So that can include some of these that you can see on the slide here. Now, this isn't all the examples that are out there. I would strongly suggest you go off and do your own research. Uh, starting on UCAS is a really great place um, if you haven't looked on that already. Just to give you an idea of how many courses there really are out there, according to UCAS, um, at the moment, there's 1,541 different biology courses that you could study in the UK. And for biomedical science, there's 440. So there are a lot of options out there. I'm just now going to tell you a little bit about some of these courses and uh, what they're all about, really. And you will notice I've popped some links at the bottom of some of my slides. So please do feel free to go to these. Uh, they're a great place to find out a bit more um, information. So, as I said, biology, it's a very broad subject. Lots of different areas come underneath this biology kind of um, course. And that was one of the reasons I decided to study it. I really enjoyed what I was learning at A-level, um, but I knew there was, there was more out there and there was more diversity in what I could be learning. And I wanted the opportunity to kind of um, get an overview of lots of different uh, subject areas and find out what I was really interested in and what I really wanted to kind of concentrate um, my study on. And biology is also really diverse in the way it's taught as well. So um, it could be a combination of things. So for example, uh, working, doing some lab work, uh, being in the classroom or having lectures or going out into the, in the real world and, and doing your own field research. <clears throat> there is also animal biology as well, which you could study, um, which is sometimes called zoology. Um, so this is the study of the animal kingdom. So it's a little bit more focused um, in sort of the biology uh, field. Um, and this can include lots of different areas. So looking at the evolution of animals, uh, looking at how they're classified, uh, looking at how they're distributed across the world, and also looking at both living and extinct animals as well. 
There is also biomedical science as well, which can sometimes be called a human biology. So this is looking at how cells and organs and systems of the human body uh, function and also understanding and treating human disease as well. So this can be a real great pathway if you're thinking about going into medical research or working in health services. There's also ecology and environmental science as well. So this is a very much ever changing um, subject because it's concentrating on the environmental cha challenges uh, that are facing our worlds. So for example, looking at climate change and pollution. You can also study microbiology as well. So this is the study of all um, living organisms um, that are too small to be visible to the naked eye. Uh, so sometimes referred to as microbes. This includes organisms such as bacteria, viruses, archaea, protozoa. And they are really important um, to processes in our world and also really do impact um, lots of different aspects of our everyday lives. Finally, we've got plant science, uh, sometimes referred to as botany. Uh, you will notice that lots of these courses do sometimes have multiple names. Uh, so it is a good idea to, to do your research um, and see uh, when you're looking at courses. Um, so this is the science of plant life. Uh, so all about how they contribute uh, to our global ecosystems, how they can provide food and vaccines, and also looking at how they are used as raw materials in industry as well. So what are the benefits of studying courses like these? Uh, so uh, for me, it was really the hands-on experience. So lots of these courses have lots of practical elements. You will find there's lots of lab work involved. Uh, like I said, you could go out and do um, research out in the real world and go out um, uh, locally and also abroad as well. There's lots of networking opportunities too. So both um, with your course, so with the academics that you'll meet or the guest speakers that they might bring in, or if you get the opportunity to do an internship or a placement, which I will talk a bit more about later. There are lots of transferable skills as well. So you will notice that I'm not working directly in biology right now, but I'm definitely using the skills that I gained on my course um, in my current um, job. And there are definitely lots of career options as well, uh, which again, we'll touch on a little bit more later. So there are just a couple of different course options as well with biology and biosciences courses. So some universities offer a foundation year. So this gives you um, kind of an extra year to get uh, more confidence and more knowledge in the subject before you start that sort of main three year course. Most of these courses uh, will be um, BSCs, so they're bachelors in science, but you will find some universities also have the option to do an MSci. So this is a master's in science. Um, this is what I have um, as a degree. And this adds on an extra year to your course. And it's really great to gain some extra research experience, potentially some extra industry experience. And it's really great preparation if you uh, think you might want to do further study, uh, for example, going and doing a PhD. Finally, some universities do offer, also offer uh, joint honours. So this allows you to put uh, one subject with another. So if you can't quite decide what you want to study, or if you think there's a job out there that would really suit two um, kind of areas put together, then that is an option. Uh, so for example, biology and forensic science, or biology and law. I'm just going to talk a little bit about modules now. Uh, so a module is a subject area within a course. And these are some examples that I've popped on the slide here. You will typically find in the first year of these sorts of courses that these will all be compulsory. And this gives you a really strong grounding in the subject and kind of gets everyone on the same level um, um, in their first year. And then as you progress into further years, you'll have more option about what you can choose and you can tailor your degree to suit you depending on what your interests are. It might be a good idea to have a look on the university's course pages and to see what types of modules they offer on the course because there might be a certain area of the subject that you are really interested in and you would like to study. <clears throat> so once you've decided um, what course you'd like to study, you then have to choose what university you want to study it at. And there are a number of different elements that can come into play uh, with this decision. I would suggest um, potentially creating a spreadsheet or a mind map or a list and putting all of the kind of things that are important to you in there. And then when you're looking at universities, you can tick and cross them and, and see which one has all the elements you're looking for. So I'm just going to go through some of these now um, and just uh, give you a few different pointers of, of sort of things to think about. 
So thinking about the location. So would you like to stay close to home? Would you like to move quite far away? Um, would you like to be at a campus university where everything's all in one place? Or would you prefer to be at a city university where everything's kind of spread out across the city? What are the entry requirements? So what grades are they looking for? Or what tariff points are they looking for? And do they want any specific grades in any specific subjects? Have a look at what facilities they have on offer as well. So lots of universities do virtual tours on their websites. So you can have a look online and see um, what's on offer. It might also be a good question to ask is how much access do students get to these facilities as well. Also, there might be some really cool equipment that the university has that you'd like to use or um, so <laughs> whether that be a life size horse um, with its sort of skeletal system or whether that's a computer ring that's dedicated uh, to the course that you're looking to study. Also, you might want to think about internships as well. So an internship is a sort of short work experience um, out in industry uh, during your course. It is really great for gaining some amazing employability skills. Uh, so this could be uh, maybe with a zoo or a conservation group or in a school if you're interested in going into teaching. It might also be good to look at placements as well. Uh, so again, these are amazing for, for gaining employability skills. These are slightly longer, so potentially a semester or a whole year, um, and these can be done in the UK or abroad. Uh, so, for example, for charities or laboratories or veterinary surgeries. And some universities do offer study abroad programmes as well, so where you can go and study at a different university in a different country. <clears throat> The course might also offer some really cool trips and events as well. So have a look and see what they've done in the past. Um, this could change year on year potentially, but it gives you an idea of what they've done before. So for example, when I was in the second year of my uh, course, we had the opportunity to go to the Peak District and uh, do some research looking at the biodiversity of different habitats. Um, and um, we were looking at insects um, in different habitats across the Peak District. Um, and we had a chance to do surveying, we did identification, and then we analysed our results and we presented them to the group, as well as writing up a project report as well. There could also be um, overseas opportunities as well. Um, so uh, I do encourage you to check out what the university is offering on that course. Um, again, that could change your own year, but it, it does give you a good idea of, of what's um, been done in the past. Uh, so, for example, um, this is a trip to South Africa to uh, look at animal behaviour and conservation. And finally, I would encourage you to look at volunteering opportunities as well. Uh, so not only are they really rewarding and a great way to give back to your sort of local community, um, they're also a really great way to gain some skills to pop onto your CV um, as well. So whether that be on your course directly or that could just be um, in the university in general. So, for example, um, when I was in my third and fourth year, I had the chance to go out with a PhD student um, and help her um, collect data for her um, project. So we were looking at the biodiversity of reed beds, looking at industrial and also natural ones, and looking, um, doing moth trapping and mammal trapping and invertebrate surveying as well. And these were skills that I used both on my course <coughs> And also since I've graduated as well, so through working uh, with the Wildlife Trust and also working in environmental education as well. So um, what type of transferable skills do these types of courses give you? Uh, now these are the types of skills that employers are really looking for and as it suggests they are transferable to lots of different areas. So they definitely develop your analytical skills. So there will likely be um, data analysis as part of the course, so uh, through doing uh, statistics. Um, there might also be, an, you'll be asked to analyse um, sort of literature as well, so looking at papers that are written by academics. Definitely your critical thinking skills as well, so your ability to solve problems. Uh, so for example, when I was in my final year uh, of university, I was doing a big research project all about the three spine stickleback. Um, which is a freshwater fish and we were looking at how its behavior was affected by water temperature and I had set up my methods and decided what I was going to do um, and then I was told I wasn't able to use the bit of equipment I wanted to use so I had to come up with an alternative plan um, for my project and uh, fortunately it did it did work and the problem solving um, was something that was really beneficial um, for me to kind of learn as a skill. Also your communication skills as well, so both written uh, through maybe writing essays or doing exams or writing project reports and also verbally, so delivering presentations or posters as well. 
University is really great for your team working skills as well. So um, lots of work will be done in groups um, and it might be with people that you've never spoken to uh, before. And finally, your subject specific knowledge and understanding as well. So in terms of your career options from these um, types of courses, there are so many. Uh, these are just some examples that I've pulled of on the slide here. And three of them I've kind of done as well since I left university uh, to just show you that people do move uh, and do move around different careers um, um, as they go and as they, as they get older. So I was a teaching assistant, as I said, um, and then I worked um, with wildlife managers in the Wildlife Trust, and uh, then I worked in environmental education. Um, some students might decide to do further study as well. So they might go off and do a master's, um, which is typically a one year course um, after you do your, your BSc. Some students might decide to do a PhD, which is typically a four year long course. It's very specific in one area of a subject. And if you're interested in becoming a teacher, um, then you, you might decide to go off and do teacher training uh, to become a primary or secondary school teacher. Okay, so in terms of what's next, um, I would strongly suggest going to the UCAS website, as I've said before. Uh, from there, you can go onto the individual university websites and lots of them are offering uh, virtual open days right now. And that's a really great opportunity to find out more about the course and the university in general. I've popped some really useful um, websites on there as well. Um, if you want to find out a bit more about the subject and what's going on currently, um, I've also put some journals on there. So that's current academic um, research. Um, and these are really accessible and, and really interesting. And they might spark your interest in a certain area of the subject. And it might also be something that's really great to pop on your personal statement as well um, to show your enthusiasm and interest for the subject outside of what you might be doing at school or college. Finally, that's just a link to um, the University of Gloucestershire's website if you are interested. Um, but thank you so much for listening. Um, if you have any questions, then as John said, please pop them in the Q&A and I will try my best to answer them for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Holly. Uh, brilliant session. I love the idea of a mind map or, or spreadsheet when picking courses. I can't tell you how many students I work with that, that just don't put much thought into where they're going to go to university, when it, which is bonkers when you think university for many is three years. For Holly, as she said, she did a master's degree, so probably four years. Um, so do loads of research and, and Holly's given you, if you're interested in biology, some, some really useful suggested headings as well. So great stuff. Thank you, Holly. Uh, right. Um, our next speaker is Tegan Yates. Uh, Tegan is joining us from Edge Hill University and she's going to offer a, a similar but very different um, presentation. She's going to look more from the, the student perspective, perhaps, and, and give you some application tips and things as well. Um, Tegan has graduated from biology as well and um, fairly recently, and, and Tegan's going to tell you all about that. So, Tegan, um, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much, John. As he said, my name is Tegan and I'm joining you from Edge Hill University today. So I'm going to um, give you a little bit of a student perspective on this because, as John said, I have just graduated last year, so 2019, from Edge Hill studying biology. Um, so I'm going to kind of take you a bit through the process that um, I went through, so thinking about the stuff that I kind of was looking at when I was going to university. So obviously, um, I'll start by introducing myself. So I studied my A-levels at my school sixth form, which was quite small. Um, I think there was only about 100 of us in my year. So that's, that's relatively small compared to some bigger colleges. So when I was looking for universities, it was really important to me that it wasn't going to be a really big university. Um, and I was going to be able to get to know my tutors um, on a personal level as well as an academic level, because uh, that's just how I learned best. Um, so I decided to study biology at Edge Hill and I did that for three years. Um, and I graduated in 2019, so literally just a year ago now. Um, and since then, I've been working for Edge Hill, so I didn't venture uh, very far, um, but I now work as a student recruitment assistant. And essentially what that is, is I give advice um, and just give knowledge to students that are in, you know, college, maybe sometimes um, in year 11. Um, and just tell them really about my experiences and um, I do some taster stuff with them. So I am still using that biology degree because um, I am quite focused around biology and geography as well. So. We'll jump straight in, enough about me. Um, why study biology or biosciences? So you'll gain a massive in-depth understanding of a wide range of topics. So biology, I think, as Holly said, is a really, really broad subject. Um, and I will take you through some of the disciplines um, shortly. But you'll also get trained to use various pieces of equipment in the lab and the field. So when I was at uni, I learned to use equipment I'd never even heard of before. 
and I absolutely loved that experience. So I spent half my time in the lab, half my time in the field and absolutely loved getting trained up. And they are really great skills to put on your CV as well. So obviously if you want to go on and um, pursue a career in any of the disciplines that you study while you're at university, you've already got that training on some of this equipment that you might need. You get to enhance your skills. So things like your communication, your teamwork, your independence, you get to enhance those and throughout loads of different assessment methods throughout all the different modules that you've got the opportunity to study you'll get hands-on experience that will enable you to apply for professional level jobs straight after graduation so that's pretty similar to the equipment and, and the skills but essentially just just to make the point that if you wanted to go on to study and um, in that discipline or within in biology in general you would be qualified to do so from studying a degree and you'll experience a range of teaching methods and assessments, which I'll go into a little bit more detail um, in shortly. So a little bit about application tips. So this is something that I was really worried about um, when I was looking at universities, because I'm dyslexic. So writing a personal statement for me was uh, my absolute worst nightmare. But I, I assure you it really wasn't as bad as I'd made it out to be. Um, so I was having a look, I had a, um, went to group and days and things like that and spoke to tutors and actually spoke to people like myself at careers fairs and higher education fairs and, and got lots and lots of tips. So I'm just going to pass a couple of those on to you. So when you're applying in your personal statement, the biggest thing to show is your motivation. So tell those admissions tutors why you want to study that subject and why you want to study it at that university. Obviously that's quite difficult because you are applying to five different options at once, but admissions tutors do understand that. You try and make it as general but as specific, which I understand is really quite contradictory. Um, but if you are passionate about the subject, you will be able to do it. The next thing to talk about will be your academic ability. So this isn't necessarily the grades that you've got or the grades that you're predicted to get. Um, this is more about kind of the modules you've enjoyed. So when I was studying A-level biology, I absolutely loved the ecology side of things rather than the human side of things. And that's kind of what I spoke about in my personal statement. I also had a look on the universities that I was applying to the website and had a look at some of the modules that they had available. So try to link some of those modules that I'd studied in college to the modules that I was going to study at university if I was to go there. The next thing would be skills and attributes. So obviously everybody has a very broad range of skills from all of their different experiences. So from school, from college, from part-time work, volunteering everybody will have this bank of skills the best thing to do is try and apply those so if you're going to talk about how good your communication skills are why is that going to help you study on that degree that you're going to apply for uh, work experience again is really important and um, obviously at the moment admissions tutors are very aware that it can be quite difficult especially in things like biology and biosciences to get this work experience so um, when I spoke to um, our admissions tutor at Edge Hill, he's said to me just to um, recommend doing lots of extra reading. Um, so places like New Scientist and having a look at some of those journals, um, they're really, really good and they show your motivation as well. So you're kind of linking those two things together. And then finally, if you want to, if you've got any hobbies and interests um, that would enable you to stand out, that would apply to studying on that degree, definitely pop those in as well. So this is just a really long list um, of disciplines that you can study and I completely get that and if you've never heard of any of these things before please don't worry about it because the idea of studying a biology degree is to learn about all of these disciplines. So when you're applying to study a degree or whenever you go on to study a degree if you choose to they know that you're not an expert. The idea of studying on that course is to become an expert. So like I say, don't worry too much if you don't know what they are, but definitely have a look what's out there. Because I, like I said, when I was studying my A-levels, I really liked the ecology side of things, but I think that was just because I enjoyed going on field trips and putting my walking boots and my waterproofs on, going for a little adventure. But when I actually got to university, I found out that just within that ecology side of things that I enjoyed, there was so, so much that I could do. So things like plant science, invertebrate ecology, all these things that I hadn't even studied at GCSE or A-level that I turned out to absolutely love. So if you've got something in mind that you really want to study, then definitely have a look. If not, please do keep an open mind because there'll be so much that you can 
and um, explore that you might not have even heard of before. So that kind of nicely leads me into courses. So if you have got a specific discipline in mind, so for example, plant science or human genetics or um, biomedical science, something like that, then there will be courses out there for that. So according to UCAS for 2020-2021 entry, there's currently 1,536 um, biology courses. So that's just biology from 158 providers. So that's obviously a massive, massive choice for you to make. Um, and I would highly recommend from my personal experience, if you're not sure what discipline you're interested in, if you're not quite sure what career you want to take, keep it as broad as possible um, because that opens so many doors for you. Um, I know at Edge Hill, um, if you are studying on the biology course, you do have the option to change that course after your first year. So you can swap over to that genetics or the biomedical science or the ecology and conservation, for example. So have a look what opportunities are out there have a look at what universities offer what courses um, and try and make your decision from there. But as I said, please do keep an open mind because there might be some things that you've never even heard of before that you might really, really love studying. So obviously on all of these degree courses, you're gonna have a wide range of assessment methods. And this for me, when I was looking at universities was really important because I've, as I've mentioned, I am dyslexic. So exams and writing essays aren't really my strong suit. So it was really important to me that I wasn't just going to be assessed by sitting exams or writing essays because that, that's what I struggle with. So it wouldn't make any sense for me to put myself in a position where um, I probably wouldn't do as well as I could um, just because of the assessment method. So have a look what's available to you. Um, so there's essays, there's presentations, group work, written exams, practical exams, and um, writing scientific articles. There are so many ways that you can be assessed on a biology or a biosciences courses. So have a look, have a think about yourself, have a think what you're good at and what are your strong suits, what are your not so strong suits um, and try and tailor that around it. There is also a lot of module choices on these courses, especially if you're studying something like biology because it is such a broad discipline. Um, you will be able to pick things um, that have different assessment methods um, and that's kind of what I did. So like I mentioned earlier, I love the field trips. So I kind of picked my modules based around when I would be able to go on field trips um, and then the assessment methods as well, because I preferred practical things rather than sitting down and writing an essay or sitting down and revising for an exam. So because you're gonna sit all of these different assessment methods and you're gonna study all of these different disciplines if you decide to study biology or biosciences, you're going to pick up so many transferable skills. So things like presentation skills, initiative, communication, teamwork, independence. You might already have some of those from studying at school, at college, again, part-time work or volunteering. And even if you do have these skills already in your bank, you will be able to build on them, you'll be able to practice them, and you'll just put yourself in such a better position um, at the end of your degree. But some things you might not have come across before, um, so things like data analysis you might not have done before. I know I didn't do that till my second year at university. And it turns out I was actually really, really good at it, um, which is very strange to me um, because I've never really been very, very good at anything before. Um, but I kind of sat down there and um, I was being taught and I just, I just knew how to do it and it was great. Um, so that's a skill now that I can add to my CV, which I couldn't add before my degree. Um, so again, just keeping an open mind, even if you think, oh, I've got all of these skills in my bank, Think about the opportunities that you'll have to practice them um, and to build on them as well. So with all of those transferable skills that you'll have in the bank, that opens so many doors when it comes to careers for you. Um, so you've got things that would obviously require further study. So if you were to study a biology or a biosciences degree and you wanted to go on to be a teacher, you would need to go and study a PGCE, so a Postgraduate Certificate of Education. Um, if you wanted to be an academic researcher as well, you might need to go on and study a Master's of Science or a Master's of Research and then possibly go on to study something like a PhD. But depending on the course that you choose to study, so depending on that discipline, you might be able to go straight into um, any one of these careers. So biotechnologist, microbiologist, genetic counsellor, and um, some of these things you can kind of get higher education and um, training schemes, so graduate jobs and things like that. Um, but as you will have all of these transferable skills, you'll have studied so many different broad topics, you will have a lot of career options. 
so for me I know I've mentioned it quite a lot but I am dyslexic so when I was looking at universities I found it a lot easier to look at the facts and figures rather than looking at like reports and, and words and things like that but this is just me so hopefully um, if you're anything like me this might um, be able to help you as well so I kind of looked at general statistics so applications for bio biological sciences courses have increased 40.1% between 2006 to 2007 to 2016 to 2017. So that's when I was going to university. So that was really important to me because that kind of showed me that the demand for scientists and biologists is growing. So that kind of translated to me that if, if there's a demand, then there's probably going to be more jobs at the end of it. Um, in 2019, according to UCAS application data, uh, more women applied um, than men to. Um, Bioscientist degree programs. And finally, 88.3% of biology graduates are employed in further or in further study six months after graduation. So, moving slightly on to that employability, this was really important to me. And although I haven't actually got um, a job within the sector, um, I do still massively use my degree to do what I do now. And um, so, you can see there um, the different statistics of working full time in the UK, working part time further study unemployed and um, you can see all of those statistics there and this is what the people that are employed do so um, as you can see there's lots of people that have biology and biosciences degrees they don't work in the sector and that is absolutely fine that is the whole point of doing such a broad degree and gaining those transferable skills and putting yourself through all of those different assessment methods and um, it's so you can open all of those doors and you can change careers as well. And um, so I obviously I currently work for um, Edgehill University, but I do want to go back and I do want to do a master's. So I want to get back into science and I want to kind of change my career and go down that path. And that is absolutely fine as well. And um, so you can see on there, so you've got science professionals, there are 8.5% and other professionals. And um, and then you've got health professionals as well. So if you were to study something, for example, biomedical science, you would have the opportunity and to go and work in like the health sector or something like that. So another really important thing for me to look at was student opportunities, because although I was going to university to do my degree, I did want to move away from home and I wanted to gain that independence and I wanted to make loads more friends. And I just wanted to know what more I could do. And um, so things like scholarships and bursaries, I'd recommend having a look into. So every university will have different scholarships and bursaries. They all set their own criteria. Um, so definitely have a look what's available to you at the universities you would like to apply to. Extracurricular activities, so having a look at the Students' Union. So um, I was mainly looking at Freshers' Week when I was having a look um, at the, the Students' Union. But going through university as well, I got involved in some societies and stuff like that. And that was really fun because it kind of took my mind off um, uni sometimes. So when it was getting a bit too much and I had a couple of deadlines coming up, it was nice to just go for an evening watching a film with a few people that I'd met from a society or something like that. Placement opportunities. Um, I did a bit of a placement at the university, so I just helped out over the summer. But they do offer, different universities again will offer different things, but there are the opportunities to do things like placement years and study abroad years or semesters. Networking is really important. So if you want to go into a career in science, networking will be really important to you. Um, so have a look at the availability to do that. And um, does the university provide any networking opportunities or do they have any sort of funds to allow you to go to any conferences or anything like that? Learning a language, um, this was important to me, but then I kind of decided against it in the end. Um, but I did have a look at it because um, I thought I was gonna um, do it alongside my degree, but I didn't end up doing that. Um, but something to have a look out for if you're interested in something like that. What field and lab skills I could gain? Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I went to a really quite small sixth form, so we didn't really have very much equipment. Um, we did manage to go on a field trip, which kind of massively opened my eyes to the ecology side of biology, which I really enjoyed doing. Um, however, it was important to me that I had the field and lab skills because I didn't know what career I wanted to go into. I wanted to kind of open my mind and just, just open myself up to as many skills as I possibly could. Um, and then I would have more options after university. And training on industry strand, industry standard equipment um, as well. So that was also really important to me. Um, things like the scanning electron microscope that we have at Edge Hill, 
um, I was having a look at different equipment and stuff like that um, that you would that I would be able to get trained up on because I know some universities um, have the equipment but don't quite let you get trained up on it and um, so have a look into that if it's not available on the website definitely get in contact with someone and ask if that's important to you as well. So finally just a couple of things just for you to consider hopefully it's been useful and hopefully my experiences um, have helped you or made you think about something that maybe you've not thought about before um, but just a few more things so what courses interest you just explore what's out there like I said, uh, there was things when I got to university that I hadn't even heard of before and I absolutely loved studying. And um, there might be something within all of those disciplines of biology or biosciences that suits your needs and interests exactly. Um, what universities offer them, so just because it's got the same name, it's not necessarily the same course. So as I mentioned, there's over 1,500 um, biology courses available on UCAS for this year's entry. And also just because they're all called biology they will all be different and um, so have a look at the individual module breakdowns and um, of each course as well what kind of university do you want to go to do you want to be a campus university or a city university do you want to be close to home further away from home obviously that'll be down to personal preference check what's needed so what you cast grades or specific and um, other requirements for each course what work experience do you need? So we don't specifically ask for any at Edge Hill, but please do remember that part-time jobs and volunteering are work experience too, and you will be able to gain those skills that you'll be able to apply to your course. You don't necessarily have to have um, biology or biosciences work experience to get onto a biology or biosciences course. And finally, what are the graduate employability rates? So as I mentioned, that was really important to me. It might not be as important to you, um, but if it is, there's loads of reports out there. There's websites like prospects.ac.uk. That's a really good website to have a look at um, if you're thinking about careers and things like that. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I, I hope that was useful. Um, but yeah, thank you very much from me. Our final speaker is Dr. Chris Field, who is joining us from Manchester Metropolitan University. Uh, Chris is a senior lecturer over there. And Chris is going to uh, provide a, an academic more perspective, um, thinking about what to expect on a biology course and, and no doubt some of the brilliant information as well. So, Chris, I'll pass the floor to you, please. OK, thanks very much, John. And thanks very much, uh, uh, Tegan and uh, Holly, for some, a couple of really interesting talks. I'll see if I can successfully share my screen and that looks okay okay well hi everybody my name is chris i'm a lecturer and a researcher in environmental ecology at manchester metropolitan university um biology is a big subject area uh, I, I sort of work right at the environmental science end of, uh, of biology so i work with organizations like natural england uh, defra uh, the environment agency natural resources wales and i i, I sort of help them um regulate um um pollution so nitrogen pollution particularly and how we regulate that to protect our sort of our sites of special scientific interest so our, our sort of conservation sites i also work with organizations uh, that are involving in landscape restoration particularly in peatlands because uh, they're, they're really important in, in, in the battle against climate change but biology is a really big subject area i'll try and give you an idea of that i, I should say at mmu biology um is 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 very much focused on in the department of natural sciences we also have a department of life sciences where healthcare the healthcare sort of science and the bioscience bio medical sciences side kicks off um, but anyway i'll try and give you a flavor of what we're going to study on the degree um, <clears throat> I think one of the big differences at a university compared to a school or college is that you've been taught by um, sort of specialists. Um, this, these are the sort of the, these are the staff in our biology department. So we've got over thirty lecturers, and each one of each one of us has our own specialism. So uh, we're led by Trish, for example. Um, she's the sort of head of biology. Um, she's a, a microbiologist, and she specialises in metal eating bacteria and, um, and microbial fuel cells. Uh, Kirsty um, works on, she's a, a forensic biologist, but she specializes in lab on a chip, so miniaturization of quite advanced techniques. Uh, we've got, I won't go through everybody because it'll take too long, but we've got uh, James um, and Damien, who are both uh, micro molecular biologists with a healthcare background. And then we've got, say, Andy, Lou, Laura, who are an environment, uh, my, uh, microbiologists with a, an environmental background, so perhaps looking at water quality or, or, or sewage or land remediation. Um, just to give you an idea, a few more people, Emma, uh, plants, uh, pollinators, butterflies and moths, 
Uh, Robin evolution of, of the sense of touch in mammals, Charlotte evolution of uh, bone structures uh, within mammals, uh, Scott landscape ecologist and spider specialist, Caroline's a, a specialist on primates and uh, looking at sort of social life of animals and how those relationships can be used to understand sort of breeding programs, Jan's behaviour domestic animals, Francis tropical ecology, uh, Stu birding, internationally renowned birder and uh, uh, looks at, um, and, at the trade and endangered sort of bird species. So I hope that's given you an idea of the sort of breadth of staff that you'll have on, on offer. So whilst at school and college your teachers do a really really good job of teaching the whole spectrum of biology and perhaps have their own specialisms at university. If you're going to do a class in microbiology um, you'll be taught by a microbiologist and, and, and so on. Okay. Um, I think one of the another differentiates which uh, which uh, Tegan touched on as well was the the availability of specialist lab kits. Uh, many universities have invested many hundreds of thousands of pounds uh, in in really high quality lab resources, and these these are the sort of the sorts of equipment that you will find in the real world when you go on to do your jobs. So, for example, you might find a we'll use a kit that you see in the food industry, or perhaps in the healthcare industry, or maybe in terms of environmental consulting. Uh, you might even use a kit that we find you'd find in a new the power station uh, and we tried to get students to use that as much as possible within our degree and we also try and uh, teach you using uh, sort of real world exams uh, real world examples so for example here we've got a, a, a biotechnology example where we're trying to create a plant microbial fuel cell and um, we're going to use natural processes of oxidation and reduction within the environment as an anode and cathode uh, within a natural battery so it's a really sort of real, really strong biotech application uh, we'll go out and we'll investigate the ecosystem and we'll look at uh, the interaction between microbes and invertebrates and, and water quality and nutrient cycling within an ecosystem. And we might even consider sort of environmental bio microbiology, which is really topical uh, area of employment when we're looking at water quality and linking microbiology and invertebrates uh, to, um, to water quality and water chemistry. Uh, and then finally, we'll also use perhaps molecular techniques to understand sort of food contamination. We had a nice example a few years ago when we had the, the horse meat scandal. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Um, but we sort of, we, we, we got students to go out and buy uh, fish from their local fish and chip shops. And if fish and chip shops were selling that white fish as say, cod, was it cod? And we ran that we sequenced the DNA on the fish, and we found actually in a few cases people were selling their were selling their uh, selling Vietnamese catfish instead of cod. So we can use sorts of these techniques uh, that we'll teach you at university in the real world. In the real world, uh, and then actually a little interesting one at the bottom. We we had a, um, a visit day uh, just before uh, the lockdown, about three weeks before the lockdown, and we we did a nice. Um, practical with uh, prospective students and we also do this with uh, with our with our students as well where we compare unwashed hands on the left uh, with washed hands and we look at the benefits of washing hands in terms of the amount of uh, uh, bacteria uh, on our on our on our skin uh, so lots of uh, lots of lots of use of a really advanced kit um, typically in a lab you'll work in groups this is our, one of our big ecology teaching lab it's actually twice the size of this and you'd work in groups of two to four students uh, in a practical that's been set by, by, the, by the member staff, there'll probably be about five staff on walking around to help you out in the practical. Uh, and then you'll work through it, you'll prepare samples, uh, we'll take you through how they're analysed in the first year, but then as you move through the degree and your experience develops, and particularly when you're uh, carrying out your final year project, we'll also get you operating, operating the equipment as well. So it's really good experience for your, for your future careers. Um, what does a biological sciences degree uh, look like? Um, well. We split each show up into eight units, and you need to pass all eight units to earn 120 credits each year. That's that sort of a, a what a degree consists of, and that's the same pretty much across all universities, albeit we might have different numbers of units. So we, we've in the past we've had four and we've had six, but at the moment we do eight. We feel that gives students quite a lot of uh, of optionality. But by and large, you'll still be doing the same amount of credits and the same amount of uh, assessments across different universities. For us. Students study four units at a time and they do about three hours, excuse me, about three hours each week uh, on each unit. Um, typically that's probably a lecture followed by a lab class. However, it might be that some weeks you'll have a tutorial and a seminar and some weeks you'll go on a field trip. So we'll, 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 we'll shuffle things around. But generally, I'd say you're having, you'll, you'll have a lecture and a lab class on, on most units uh, each week. Um, just an important point to, to mention, and I think uh, one of the other speakers mentioned this as well, um, we're not just asking after uh, testing your um, memory with a big end of your exam. 
a lot of our assessments are designed to represent real world scenarios and so they're designed to develop your skills and test your skills other than memory in, in different ways so for example we might ask you to write a research proposal um, we might ask you to present your work verbally or perhaps in terms of a poster communication is really important in science uh, we often ask you to write up the results of, uh, of your labs um, and, and also we might test you on competency, competency, maybe lab skills or perhaps data analysis skills as well. Um, I've sort of, I've tried to give you an idea of what you might study in the first year. I think one of the other speakers also sort of touched on, on, on this. Generally, uh, and I've looked across a few biology degrees uh, from different universities and whilst the unit titles might, might, might differ, um, the sort of broad content remains the same. Um, and we all try to give you a really solid underpinning uh, across the broad field of, uh, of biology there's some more units on the next slide and we do, we do, so you would tend to do at MMU you do six units that are common across all degrees and then you would study another couple of units which focus on your sort of specialist uh, sort of degree de uh, degree title um, so for example uh, how science works is a tutorials based unit so, so you will probably have a, a, tu a, tutor a, um, a personal tutor at university uh, so one of the guys uh, you saw on my first slide with all the different faces on, if you come to do a micromolecular biology degree, your personal tutor will be a micromolecular biologist and you'll, you'll, you'll work with them for the three years throughout university and they'll help you with career choices, with option choices, but also they'll help you get into academic life when you first come to university. So a, a tutor group might be between six and ten students uh, depending on, on the degree size. What we also do in How Science Works is give you a crash course in uh, data analysis and academic skills and research skills at the start of the degree. Um, I've also put down how, how we assess different units here as well, so you get an idea of the breadth of, uh, of, of assessment. So we, we assess your ability to, to carry out some basic data analysis, but then we also ask you to write a basic science article. Uh, and you'll get a lot of support from that from your tutor in terms of helping you pull that together. Uh, we want all students to have an understanding of uh, genetics, of evolution, how evolution occurs through sort of mutation and, and the modern synthesis. Um, this is uh, assessed for the multiple choice test, but you have the opportunity to practice it so you can see the areas that you're strong and, and the areas that you might need to uh, do a bit more reading in. Um, some people say, oh, well, I want to do wildlife biology or an animal behaviour degree, why should I work on conservation, why should I look at genetics? Well, genetics is a really useful tool. I would actually use it throughout all, throughout all biology, including in conservation as well. Um, I do a lot of work in ecology, and this is where we bring in the, the, eco, the, the concept of an ecosystem. So we're considering everything from microbes right up to uh, big animals like, like deer and how they all interact together uh, through plants, through soils and through sort of nutrient cycling. In that we have a 12 hour open book test, so we're not testing your memory again, we're testing your ability to apply your knowledge that you do, that you've, um, you've, you've, you've learned during the year. Students sit that at home and when they start it they have 12 hours to complete it. Uh, and we also um, ask you to write up uh, some of the labs that you'll do uh, within, the subject, within, that, within that unit. And then finally diversity. Um, the whole, um, we want students to understand um, the di diversity of life on earth and how we all sort of came from the, from the same beginnings and how sort of we, we look at things like natural se selection, uh, nature versus nurture and uh, we'll also do lots of ID labs within this, uh, within that unit and we'll look at everything from invertebrate ID, microbial ID, right through to plants, uh, birds and, and, and tree ID. So we want everybody to have a really strong understanding about, about life on earth. Okay, uh, and then just a couple more to pick up on that are compulsory across all degrees. Uh, I'll talk about biodiversity monitoring separately because that's that's a, if it was, that's a field field course based unit. Uh, but we also want people to want to have an understanding about anatomy and physiology. Uh, so we'll look at how different creatures have adapted uh, to the air environment around them, and also how they how they've adapted to uh, interaction with each other as well. And then depending on your degree route, um, this is how we sort of we, we organise it is that you would have um, further specialist units depending on the particular degree that you come to study. Okay, and, and I think as, as Tegan mentioned, because there's a lot of commonality um, at a first year level, we're fairly flexible about uh, people changing degrees at the end of the first year. So don't worry too much, follow your gut feel when you make an application for a degree, and then we can talk about it and you can see which aspects of the degree you really like and you decide that you want to develop uh, as you move through university. 
Um, second units, that's when optionality kicks in at a lot of universities. I'm not going to go through all these, but perhaps you can see key themes developing. Um, so people who might be going off to work in sort of a, in the biotech or in, a, in, in, in industrial labs, perhaps in the food industry or in the health industry. We've got people who are developing interests in terms of observing animal behavior and, and how that can help sort of in sort of a breeding programs maybe in zoos or, or to understand if an animal's happy or not or maybe in terms of, or even in terms of a domestic environment we've got people developing skills uh, to perhaps work in uh, nat nature conservation sites uh, and, and perhaps in terms of with wildlife in wildlife reserves and then we've also got people developing sort of ecological style consultancy or environmental consultancy skills as well so the real really broad range of options that you can sort of tailor allow you to tailor um, your degree um, to, to, to the route you want to follow I should say in the second year as well, uh, we also talk to people about their final year project, particularly if you want to work in an ecosystem, you don't want to wait until the final year in September when the, the, the sort of the, the, the ecosystem and the environment's dying back. You want to be able to go out and collect sort of data in the summer between the sort of your second year and your final year. So we work with students uh, to help them develop their project ideas and we give you a lot of support in, in, in coming up with a, a really good project that you'll find interesting. Um, and then the final year, that's when we sort of focus down on um, really specialist content, actually, that will either prepare you for further study or uh, for, for, for your career. Uh, so, for example, I run this Impacts of Global Change and Ecosystems Unit, and we bring in um, external partners from Natural England and also from uh, local wildlife trusts. Uh, we'll take samples at sites on a day trip and then we'll analyse those samples in the lab when we get back. So there, we're really focusing our work on... Um, on, on, on the needs of sort of, a, of, a, of a potential employers in the future. Of course, everybody undertakes a project. Uh, this covers the whole year and our, our university is worth, it's worth two units. Uh, and hopefully by the time you've got to the end of your second year, you've sort of got to know the staff really well. And you also get and have a, a really good understanding of, um, well, you hopefully you've met somebody and who's just sort of inspired you with their work and you can work with them to produce a really, really nice project towards at the end of your degree. Um, field trips are a big part of, uh, of a biology degree. Um, potentially, maybe, I guess, if, you, if you're looking at micro and molecular biology, you might be more focused on lab stuff. Uh, however, uh, at MMU, we offer everybody a first year residential field course. It's a really good opportunity, not just to get to know staff and to, and to make new friends, um, but also to, uh, to really apply the stuff that you've, you've learned um, when you went in it throughout your first year. So you would typically work in small groups of maybe sort of six to eight students and you would choose a project that could be like an environmental microbiology project. We'll take a, we'll take a load of lab stuff down and we'll set them up, at a, set, set a lab up at a field centre. Or you might look at pollinators, plants, uh, prey capture in, with spiders, uh, water quality, uh, invertebrates, um, greenhouse gas sampling and, and lot, lots of things. There's loads of different options uh, for you to, uh, to, to um, study uh, a project on. Um, in the second year, we go out to Portugal uh, and do lots of other really nice project work and we see some, we get to see some really nice uh, different ecosystems. And then the final year, there's optional trips to Ecuador. We've got a research station there and also in Tanzania where you can go on a, a sort of two weeks safari and you can also undertake your final year projects in a really, really uh, different environment to, to, the, to the UK. But of course, day trips on individual units are also important. Uh, this is second years out at a nutrient, a nutrient addition experiment that we run in Cheshire. Uh, so the third years I took recently to uh, the, the, the sand dunes of, of Formby and we met up with the National Trust and, and Natural England staff there. Um, but yeah, within, within individual units, we might also run trips to zoos or safari parks um, or even industrial locations as well. So there's tons of different options and I think field trips or, or certainly day trips are a really important uh, part of uh, universities. So you really do check out what's on offer uh, when, when you go around different universities. Okay. Um, a lot of universities offer third year abroad. So you'd spend the first two years studying in the UK. Your third year would be spent abroad studying at a, a university, say in North America or Canada or Australia, or maybe as part of the Erasmus program. If, if, if following Brexit, we still we still participate in that program. I think I think we probably will do. And then you return to the UK for a final year. Um, uh, I think uh, both both speakers have also spoken about placement year option. Uh, from an academic perspective, I'd say it's a really good idea if you can to do a placement to do one. Um, we certainly support students in obtaining placements and also have organisations we send students to each year. Um, I, I find that students who come back to us after a placement year 
really tend to work well in the final year. I don't know if that's because they're a bit more mature or because they've grown in confidence or perhaps they've just learned lots of new things after their first two, two years at uni. Um, but they tend to do really well. So I suppose depending on your, your current skills and how much employment experience you've got, I, I'd really think about a, a place from you as well. Uh, and then just to add on to what, what, what the others were saying as well, I think a degree is about much more than a degree. Um, such your, you can come here and just do a degree and go home at the end of each day, or you can actually come to a university and really embed yourselves in academic life. There's tons of opportunities on offer at different universities from paid employment within the, within the university uh, to, to I have students coming out with me uh, in the summer to sort of participate in field work. You can really sort of uh, get a lot of additional experiences out of, out of a university degree. So the degree itself lets you apply for a job, but I think it's actually all the other experiences, perhaps volunteering and stuff that you put together during your time at university or before, and um, they'll actually get you the job. Um, I won't touch on careers too much, I think we're running over on time, uh, but suffice to say that the careers on offer for biology are as broad as the sort of subject matter that we study. I would highlight the Discover Uni website and you can compare different degrees and different degree routes um, and look at employability sort of success rates and also um, and sort of typical wages for graduates from different degrees in different areas. So. Hopefully that's me. Uh, do drop me a line on c.field um, at mmu.ac.uk if you've got any questions and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for listening.